This is the Golf Club 2019 and I'm going to play around on my latest course which is called Ferryman's Tipple. Uh, so let's just change the course. Uh, so if I find it I can just look in my courses. If anybody else wants to find it, if you go to search and type in Ferryman should get you there. Let's see, hopefully. Yes, good. Uh, so I published this probably a, a week and a half ago. It's got about 170 plays. That's not bad actually. It's uh, overtaken my previous course. And I think this is a better course than that one. Uh, so let's change the course conditions. Just one thing to point out is there's a bug with any, any courses published on the Highlands theme they automatically publish with soft fairways. So because I've got firm greens I'm just going to tweak that so the fairways are firm as well. That's terrain I guess. Firm. Let's... I'm going to change the wind to high wind as well because I need the practice. Everything else I'll just keep as default I think. And we'll go from the longest tees. And I don't have played pin set four since it's been published, so we'll give that one a go. That's all we need. Let's go. Here we go. So this is hole number one. It's a par five. It's normally reachable. Um, all, all the depending on the wind, I suppose, all of the par fives are reachable. Some are always reachable. Some are usually reachable. This one's usually reachable with master clubs, anyway, as long as we uh, put our drive in the right spot. It's uh, it's a double dog leg. And if we look at the landing area, oh, the wind's straight into us. So <laughs> so maybe today it won't be reachable. Uh, so the green's over there to the left. So we need to really be in the left half of the fairway if we're going to stand a chance to reach the green in two. Uh, and there's the fairway has a kind of hump, so anything centre or right will go a bit further away, and you're unlikely to be able to reach the green in two because the wind is straight into us. I'll just straighten this up a little bit because I don't want to hit a slow swing or anything and end up in this horrible patch of grass by there. Let's see. I just have a practice swing as well, see uh, what sort of round this is going to be. Oh, well, it's not bad. Perfect, perfect. I bet that won't stay all the way through. There we go. <laughs> fast, fast. Well, I'll take the fast bass to back swing. That might see us in the bunker. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not a bad spot. Let's see how far away that is. So we're oh, 278. So our pin is right at the back. So I think we'll struggle to make the green. It's uphill as well. I don't really want to land short because there's this kind of this big bunker, these little bunkers. Uh, so we're going to lay up. We're going to make sure we don't hook it left and end up in the water. This is kind of flattish, flattish layup point here. Further right you are, flatter it is. Uh, will that do? Maybe one more. Let's just make sure we get that far. So it's going left, not too far left, that's okay. That leaves us a nice angle into the pin. So this hole, um, it, well, it wasn't the first one I made. Um, I built quite a few holes before this one. Oh, well, there we go, nice flat line. Um, but it hasn't really changed that much since I put it together. Uphill into the wind. Might take a bit of loft off this. 
Nice angle, plenty of green to work with. That's a better swing. Perfect, perfect. Here we go, birdie chance. So with this course, I was really hoping to... My main aim was to make a course that was better than my previous course. But I also, I've done things quite differently as well. So the previous course I started with a flat plot. Um, and it had quite a clean look. Here I started with pre-generated terrain. Um, a lot of the holes like this one kind of work quite well into the terrain. Other holes I had to do a bit more sculpting. Uh, but it, it's, it's hillier, it's got a, a more rugged look to it. Uh, so let's... 17 feet. Let's try there. Hmm. That didn't curve as much as I thought. There we go. A par on the first. Yeah, it was that headwind there that uh, made that... Uh, a five stroke par five. So this is hole number two. So this hole has changed quite a lot quite a lot since I first laid it out. Um there used to be well I'll show you in a second after the flyover, but there used to be a left fairway and a right fairway. And the idea was you you choose one of those. But I've kind of changed it so you will only really use the left fairway. So the left fairway used to just be this kind of banana shape here following the water and then this was the right hand fairway which is now the fairway of the uh, the short par 4 third. Um, but I've now I've widened this fairway to give a kind of wide short flatter bit here and a kind of longer bit here. So really you're choosing whether you want to try and land there or whether you want to play it safe maybe and go for the middle of the wide bit although you might end up with a horrible sloping lie or go for the long flat part over there so again winds against us so I don't think we're going to try and carry the water over there we'll aim for this flat bit here uh, it's downhill it gets a bit slopey towards the end don't really want to end up short though so we'll go with Go with the driver. Hopefully the wind will just pull it to the left a bit where it's flattest. Ah, I went a bit far. See, it starts to slope up again at the end. Almost like a backstop. But it does make the approach shot a bit more tricky. Yeah. Let's see, uphill into the wind. Yeah, this is, this is one of the trickier approach shots. Is that going to be enough? That might be enough. It's quite a tricky pin as well, this front. front right at the front of the green there. Especially not too bad coming from this angle. Oh, it's gone right. That's not a good spot. Oh, it's just hung on. I didn't want it good to go down the slope, the slope there. So, let's hopefully we can clear this up with a chip. Probably heavy rough, 10 yards. There we go, another par. Hole number three next. This is a drivable pole, drivable par four. So this hole was added relatively late. I got well. I, I turned what was what was the second fairway from hole two into this drivable par four. Pins at the back. Right. So that's a dangerous wind, left to right. That's going to try and push us towards there. Uh, 
so if I was feeling brave I could try and just draw it in but against the wind I think that's quite tough so we could lay up thing is because it's 30 foot downhill though with a fast backswing we could end up quite close and we can use the wind to get us that pin on the right hand side let's give that a go so okay a fast downswing instead but that looks like thanks to my my pretty skew f swing there that's a pretty decent result just going to be a little awkward putting getting the ball up onto that top tier so this hole is almost always a birdie opportunity but you don't want to end up in the water <laughs> uh, or end up short as well um, I can't really see it there but uh, there's a bunker and a grassy mound as well which can make things a bit tricky let's see so 38, well we 39 feet up 10 inches, so let's call that about 51 oh yeah, see this is a bit of a nasty putt putting across the slope don't to make it too easy if you're short there we go, that should be 4 foot for birdie that's nice and flat as well First birdie of the round. So hole four. So this one genuinely has uh, a left fairway and a right fairway. Left one is kind of higher and more direct. It'll probably give you a shorter, shorter approach. Uh, the one on the right is um, kind of lower down, so you might, but it is a bit wider. And depending on what the wind's doing, uh, it could be a be the more the safer shot. And there's this, a little hump at the front of this green as well, uh, so that can determine also determine which fairway you want to come from. Uh, so normally with a right to left wind, I like using this fairway over here. Uh, but the problem with using that fairway with this pin position, uh, well, let's see if we can get a bit closer to the pin is then this hump on the right hand side of the green might come into play so I think I'd rather be from the left hand side uh, wind's against us but I don't, I don't want to run into that bunker or anything like that it looks narrow but there's banks on either side which will kick you back into the fairway if, uh, if you're offline Well, that's one other thing, choosing the left fairway, you do accept that there's a blind shot because you're playing over this hill. If you take the right hand right fairway then you get a nice view of the green. But hopefully we've got a much better angle now. Uh into the wind down about thirty foot downhill lie. Uh let's give that a go. Maybe a fast back so be under here. See if we can get one. No, nope, perfect, perfect. But hopefully, again with firm terrain. Oh, that's short. That's horribly short. Not too bad there. Thirteen yard chip, uphill, upslope. Will that be enough? It's going to hit a little down, little down slope when it gets there. Yeah, I think that should be enough. I'd rather be short than long. Oh, there we go, it's long anyway. You'll notice it's generally pretty flat by the pins but a bit slopey elsewhere. That, that's how I like to make it. If, if you're within you know, 15 foot you'll have a relatively uh, flattish putt. 
if you're further away you could get carried away by some red and yellow slopes. So this is hole 5, it's par 3, this is the signature hole this is why the course is called Ferryman's Tipple I'll show you why in a second. This was the first course I'm sorry, the first hole I made on this course and it's kind of set the tone for the rest of it. So firstly the hole itself, it's very simple it's uh, what this is a 5 iron into a kind of smallish green with a hump at the back. So basically the play here is do not go long because that hump can, if you end up long of the hump and end up having to chip it down that's a horrible shot if you end up either side of the, if you end up the wrong side of the hump from the flag then you've got a horrible putt so anything on the front half of this green is always a good shot I'll just show you why it's called Ferryman's Tipple so after the tee shot you have to walk down these steps then let's see if I can get the camera moving in the right direction <laughs> then along that little path and then here is the little ferryman's hut and the ferryman will row you across from there all the way to the green and drop you off there uh, so th this is the only th there's quite a lot of water around on this course um, this is the only one where you have to go by boat the reason you have to go by boat is that the only way to get to this course is by boat so you have to sail from wherever you're coming in and you come through past through the fifth green here and then you go along this inlet and then past some of the other holes, oh this camera's horrible with the, uh, <laughs> let's see if I can get it going, well okay so you go, basically you go along that inlet <laughs> I won't try and travel along it um, and at the far end is the clubhouse which is between the 18th and the first hole and that's how you get to the course by boat travelling past some of the uh, other holes let's focus back on the green the ferryman's tipple of course is whiskey this is a highlands course after all uh, so if you get a hole in one on this hole you better believe that the ferryman would uh, like a, the bottle of whiskey that you've got hidden in your bag so let's see downhill 5 iron, I don't want to be long oh it's gone right a bit and it's short, that's a bad shot that's a terrible shot we're going to get stuck on the rocks that's going to end up in the water is it? it's going to stay on a rock <laughs> beautiful right <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I want to chip it there. I've never actually finished on the rocks before. But I think normally when you finish on the rocks, it just kind of ignores them. Let's do a flop shot. Maybe off that bank. Super high loft. Oh. Yeah, that was a bad shot. Now we're struggling for par. See what did I say? I said I said land on the front half of the green, and I missed the green right. That was a bad shot. Just to go in to save par. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. So if you land on the front half, this hole is a birdie chance. If you don't, it can be a struggle. First bogey, back to even par. Hole number six. So this was the second hole I made, I think. And that, there are a couple of things about that fifth hole and this sixth hole that kind of set the tone for the rest of the course. This is another hole where you've got two choices off the tee. Again, I wanted to have give people choices off the tee. So we've got the kind of the safe drive is here, straight along the fairway, 
or depending on what the wind's doing, you can reach that fairway over there. Um, but I think where the flag is here, back left, I think it's sensible to go to the fairway on the right. Uh, so with hole five and hole six, I did a bit, bit of planting when I first set them out to put a few few rocks, a bit of grass and gorse bushes. Uh, and then I just kind of followed that theme through uh, the rest of the holes, try and keep it relatively consistent. So you'll see a few rocks here and there. You'll see main, generally when I've added bushes, I've added gorse bushes. Uh, and you'll see little patches of you know grass with some flowers in. Try to keep it consistent. Uh, other things you'll see are big kind of weird shaped bunkers like this one. This was the first one on the course. There's a few more of those scattered through. Uh, and other than that, it's generally small circular bunkers. Either small circular bunkers or these big weird shaped ones. And I try to keep that consistent across the course. I think it's going for a nice consistent look. Uh, so, here you'll notice that if you go longer or further left, you'll end up with a flatter lie because of the wind. I'm going to go towards the right hand side. Hope that'll move it towards the left. Oh dear. Slow and fast. That'll definitely move it towards the left. Hopefully it hangs on to the fairway. But it should be pretty flat there. <coughs> That's not too bad. So uphill a bit. Wind is mm, not really helping. Basically, because of the water there, I'm going to take the 5-iron just to make sure I get there. Might take a little bit of loft. Add a little bit of loft on. Oh dear. That's going left. That's going left. That's a bad shot. Now I'm left with an awkward shot. So, I'm going to chip it. I think probably I'm going to chip it. What's the, uh, what's the lie like? Can I get a better look? So that's downhill. That's my normal camera. That one? Yeah. Oh dear. Is that going to be far enough? No, heavy rough. Let's go that far. I don't have high hopes for this shot. Let's move to a slightly better view. That's not bad. That's not bad. Happy with that. I'll quite happily knock that in for power. Hole number seven next. This is the shortest par five on the course. Normally a birdie opportunity. So there's the landing spot there, just to the right of the fairway. Just, sorry, just to the right of the bunkers. Then you're hitting it. This is another blind approach shot over the rocks. We see those steps. And to the green. Awkward flag again. But then it is a short par 5, don't want to make things too easy. Um, oh, well, what you notice on this hole, as, as in all the other holes, there's no trees on this course. Uh, I didn't. I think it, the Highlands courses, they look better if you don't have any trees on them. I didn't really like any of the trees that, uh, that the designer gives you. Uh, so, I think even, even with a strong tailwind, you can't really reach that bit of fairway there. So we're probably going to aim for around here. Bit of an awkward distance away. You can play it super safe and go for this part of the fairway over here. That'll leave you a long second shot, but it with a with a two wood in your bag you can probably still make the green from there. It is quite a short part four at uh, par five. But we're gonna go we'll go around there. I think even if it ends up in the heavy rough at the back of this fairway, that's not a terrible place to be. Oh, there we go. Oh, 
Is that going to stay? Is that going to stay? Oh, that's a. <laughs> yeah, so I went a bit close to that bunker. And now I'm in this kind of bit of fairway that feeds into the bunker. It didn't go in the bunker, but it's left us with a bit of a horrible right to left slope. Uh, so th there is a second fairway here for your approach shot. Sorry, not for the approach shot. So that the sh that shot is blind over the steps. Um, but you can lay up on this left hand side if you want to. Uh, and you can see that from here. And that gives you a nice view down to the pin as well. Uh, but we might as well go for it. It's only a 5 iron, is it? Yeah, it's only a 5 iron. Wind's helping as well. So is that going to be enough with the wind helping? Maybe. That slope's going to take it further left. Let's give this a go. Hmm, that's going to go left. Downhill. Oh, it's giving us a flop. That's probably not a bad call. Add a bit of loft to get to counteract the downhill lie. Roll out a bit. Go on, go on. Yes! Eagle. That's not how you usually get eagles on that hole, but I'll take it. <laughs> that makes the round look a bit better. Hole number eight now, it's the second par three. I think it's uh, probably the longest par three over a big expanse of water. And pins at the front. Again, another awkward pin position here. Downhill. That should be enough, hopefully. So you can see this is a, a kind of different water, watery area here. Um, because you don't have to come this way to get to the, sub, the clubhouse by boat, uh, there's a few bridges here connecting. So here it's connecting the, uh, the 8th tee and the 8th green. Let's go on these steps and go that way. So a lot of these holes I tried to fit into the natural terrain that was generated. Uh, this is one of them, I think. I think this this kind of water was generated with a hill either side, so sculpted a green on one side. Um, well, in a few places on this course, you'll see a bunker that's not really in play at all. It's have to be a pretty bad shot to end up in, uh, end up in there. It's just to add to the look, really. Um, otherwise that bank was a bit dark and boring, uh, looking at it from the tee. Especially because the lighting is, is from behind there. Uh, right, let's take the shot. Oh dear, slow. That's bad news. That's bad news. That could bounce back in the water. No, it's going to stay there. Don't get a slow backswing on this hole. That's my tip. Oh dear. I mean, I'm almost. What's the longest flop I can do with that? With that rock in front, I'm not sure whether I need to clear and playable here. Do I play to the left of that rock? I'll give it a go, let's see what happens. Let's add some loft. Oh, this is horrible. Yeah. So that, I think that hit the rock. I think we stand a better chance from here. It's getting closer. <laughs> oh, I should have declared an unplayable. That was poor. Let's just get it on the green. Oh. It's just how to mess up a hole. 
So I'm not gonna let's put seven inches. So this is for a double bogey, dear me. A triple. Yeah, my, my swing is all over it, all over the place at the moment. I'm playing with master clubs, and uh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of a lot of slow back swings, a lot of fast down swings. So this is hole number nine. Again, one of those big weird shape bunkers in the centre of the fairway. So again, here is one where you could go left or you could go right, and usually end up going right. Can depend on where, which way the wind is. Where's the pin? Pin is back left. Yeah, so I think right fairway is definitely the way to go. Wind's helping now. So we don't want to end up in that bunker. So I might drop down to a two wood. Probably just aim for the left edge of that bunker. Perfect, perfect swing. Now I get one. Oh, even that's even. Oh, even with the helping wind, with the helping wind, that was too long. Just trickled into the light rough. So, up fourteen foot from the rough. Hmm. It's uphill, so that's not going to be far enough. That could be too far. We might catch that slope and bring it back towards the pin. Let's see. Oh, I hope it catches the slope. No, it's going to stay up there. Oh, that's going to be a difficult chip. That's going to be a difficult chip. So there's two ways to play this. I could just let it trickle down. Or I can try and flight it most of the distance, which is what I might do. And finish off for a par. So there we go, that's the front line. Um, I think I'll probably do the back nine in a separate video uh, another time. Um, but in the meantime, feel free to give Ferryman's Tipple a go and uh, try not to get a slow backswing on hole number eight, which is where that triple bogey came from.